Let's see if I can uh, make the audio in this thing work right. Not too used to the uh, FF Angpeg. There we go. There. Let me see if I can resize my picture a little bit. It's just a little bit too big. Move that up here. Let me find the handle on it. There. I'm going to try to do a little review of uh, Slackware 14.1 today. And uh, I happen to be using a 3.12.9 kernel I compiled for this. And it fully supports my Broadcom card, which I like. I am currently doing a duplicity backup at the same time I'm doing an rtorrent download of Linux Mint XFCE. So we'll see how this works. As you can see the processor here is really quite busy. But I just thought I'd do a demo of that and show you my funky screen saver or desktop, excuse me. They've got some really tough looking desktop wallpapers in here. Some of them are absolutely gorgeous. Just about all of them are, really. I mean, they're all absolutely gorgeous. You'll never find a better collection of screensavers than in Slackware as well. I mean, it's it's got it down. So what's Slackware? Slackware is basically um, a distribution that you get on a DVD from www.slackware.com. You can get a I believe it's a 686, or maybe it's a 386. No, it's I think it's a 686 or 64-bit or uh, version of the system. I'm running the 64-bit. I've upgraded the kernel to 312.9, as I said here just a minute ago. And I'm running the XFCE desktop. They provide you with uh, KDE and XFCE, WindowMaker, FVWM, uh, Blackbox, I think ICE Window Manager, and I can't remember what else. There were quite a few of them in there. <coughs> so it, out of the box you get a, a, a large selection of desktops that you can pick from and they fully load this distribution with a lot of software just about everything of the accessories here uh, was was put on the DVD and also the development and uh, education that you see here games certainly all that came from the DVD and I've added a few pieces of software from slack builds like Darktable Handbrake, Inkscape, Inkscape, excuse me, Scribus, Digicam, uh, Clementine, all my codecs and everything came from the Slack Builds website. I went out and downloaded Google Chrome and turned an RPM into a TarGZ so we could install it natively in Slackware. I've also got Easy Tether installed in here so I can go mobile. And uh, G Potter's installed. I've got uh, a Calibri in here for my ebooks and LibreOffice installed and I've got just about everything that I had with either Linux Mint Ubuntu or uh, even OpenSUSE installed here and it's more modern or as modern as any of these other distributions but amazingly stable and it just works well I mean it just does it works well no complaints and it's more modern than Debian. Just to give you a, a short rundown here, we'll go to uh, terminal, and I'll show you that he's even managed to upgrade SSH to Open SSH 6.4 Part One, which is the same OS SSH that you get with FreeBSD 10x. 
Now you don't get your SSH upgraded in Debian. You don't in Ubuntu. You don't in um, I don't believe you do in Red Hat either. They just fix the same version that they publish the system with. Uh, Debian Wheezy right now I believe is using OpenSSH 6.0. So anyway, Slackware's philosophy is, is they don't offer patch software like Debian does or Red Hat does. All of this is from the authors, the way it was intended to be. It's generic. And it does work quite well this way. And I've got a desktop, a server, and a laptop running Slackware 14.1, and I couldn't be happier. It really runs very well. I'm not disappointed with it. Uh, I've even got the MTP programs here installed so that I can access my uh, my Google Android phone and upload and download files. Uh, as I said, it's got the prettiest wallpapers that you could ever have to download. You don't have to look far for those. <coughs> and it's got the largest collection of screensavers I've ever seen in my life. I don't think there's a single distribution that has screensavers like this one does. And if you look uh, uh, on the Ubuntu side of things, well, they don't have screensavers. They gave up on it. Linux Mint gave up on it. I believe uh, OpenSUSE still has some. Debian certainly still has some. Mm, I'm not sure if the new RHEL 7 will have them or not. I don't really know much about it. <coughs> but anyway, if you want to run Linux the fun way like we used to and compile yourself a Conky program like I've got here and set you up a nice display, this is the way to do it. You know, you, you basically have a very well-maintained base that's maintained by Slackware and upgraded at periodic intervals for security reasons and bug fixes. And you can upgrade your own media, uh, your own media programs, codecs, and whatnot from Slack builds as new stuff comes out because it'll it'll pop up there on the website and you can just go up there and compile your little programs again and reinstall them. And it's really not that much to keep up with. I think it took me uh, three evenings worth of work to compile all of the programs that I'm using here in codecs. And I moved it across the board to every machine that I have installed. Uh, here in the house. So once you compile one 64-bit version of software for one machine you can take it across the board to any other machine you want. It's pretty simple to do. And it installs like lightning. I mean they don't really have a package management uh, system like you do in Slackware other than the the uh, Slack package uh, update which takes care of the base system. Um, they don't really go for that. So anything that you put on this system, you're putting on here by hand. You're downloading it from the Slack Builds website, or you're going out and getting the software on your own and compiling it. And I think I like this better because it does provide me with a lot more stability, and it does run smoother and better. Um, I just rebooted this laptop tonight, but it had been up for I don't know two or three weeks. And uh, the server's been up for since last year. <laughs> it hasn't been rebooted for anything. You can start and stop your Damien's as you change things out. So it's uh, really a very nice system, and I would recommend it to anybody that's having trouble with stability and uh, like something that's stable and fast and has a lot of features. While Ubuntu and Arch will probably offer you a larger software base than Slackware, you know, as far as applications goes, the software base is so large for me in Slack builds that I, I don't know what it would be that I would be lacking that I need. I've I've got everything here that I uh, that I need to do the usual tasks uh, three times over. Three times over. And I, uh, I don't have an operating system that's chained to a development project like Debian or Arch so that I am held hostage uh, to the whims of other developers who have a tendency to go one way or the other uh, uh, with what they want to do. As with Debian and the handbrake issue, you know, the, the Russian team gets that thing broken to where no one's able to use it, they have to fix it. 
and so they create a problem for millions of people. I don't have a problem. I just compiled my own handbrake. It's a more modern version anyway. I'm not chained to what somebody does in another country. And uh, I'm not running Arch because um, I got burned like three times in a row updating system libraries in the past and just totally turned out by it. I know there's a lot of people that love that, but I would rather have a stable, unchanging base system that he comes out with a new release every, you know, year, year and a half, nine months, however long it takes him to do it, and just upgrade my applications, you know, the few applications that I like to use as they come out with new versions, and not have to change out the entire world. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So anyway, I'd recommend uh, Slackware for anybody that wants sanity, with a capital S. And I think I'll go ahead and cut this video out and uh, thank you all for uh, for listening. I do appreciate.